Hey everyone, this is Elias from Red Match Media, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2022 Cadillac Escalade. Now, this is the king of American luxury. Let's see if uh, this model can still keep that crown. Let's go ahead and get started. We get started in the front and we can see this thing is big. This thing is bold. It is in your face. First, I do want to recognize the beautiful mahogany metallic color that this was uh, equipped with or, you know, designed with. Yeah, this thing looks so good. Right now, it's kind of throwing a brown, purplish brown color. Uh, when the sun hits it, it just shines. It looks really, really good in the sun and it's kind of subdued in, you know, cloudy weather as well but it is a beautiful color if it weren't white if it weren't black this actually this would be the first color i would pick and then obviously you go with your classics like white or black um, but it just looks really good these headlights look incredible i love the design nice little cadillac badge right in there they just look mean it has a mean face to it so the other thing i love is this big signal here uh, on the on the side and the grill the grill is nicely shaped and we have again that big cadillac uh logo here funny thing my kiddo was actually playing with it and he goes dad this has a kind of cool texture and uh, i go to look at it and it actually does so some of them uh it, it has like a scratchy texture so some of them go vertically others are just kind of like squares uh and then others are smooth but yeah it's a nice little thing right there we have the front facing camera for the uh surround uh, uh vision that this has really good in this uh the only thing is i wish it you know the kind of the the top view weren't in that tiny part of the screen that's kind of the only thing that i was like uh i wish the screen were a little bit more kind of squared off or rectangled off but yeah We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But overall, the front looks really good. This does have a uh, augmented reality camera right up there. Uh, and it does have night vision as well. Uh, I believe it's this guy. That looks like the night vision uh, system. But yeah, this front is just so beautiful. Well, let's go ahead and see what we have under this massive hood. We get under the hood and we have the massive 6.2 liter V8 cranking out 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. It is then connected to the 10-speed auto and then to the Cadillac all-wheel drive system. So a couple of things with this. It's a big V8. It screams like a big V8, but it's also very quiet like a two-cylinder engine. Now, you're wondering, what do you mean two-cylinder two -cylinder engine? Well. Cadillac has the technology in this that it can cut down all the way to a two-cylinder engine when it doesn't really need the power. Um, I'm assuming it's maybe when, you know, when you're on a highway and you're at a constant speed, it may not need all of those. So it can do between two to eight cylinders, which is good. Helps out with fuel efficiency uh, because you're going to need it with this big V8 under here. Um, it's been great. It sounds really good. Um, it wants you to step on it. It wants you to, yeah, make it breathe, make it have fun. Um, but it's been really good power plant. 10 speed is really smooth. Um, sometimes it takes a while to kind of get, you know, if you're kind of tense at the 10th speed to get down, you kind of feel it go one step and then to the lowest gear um, uh, that it can take, obviously, depending on your speed. So that's kind of the only thing I felt. But other than that, this thing has been great. It sounds so good. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and see what we have in those wheels and tires. We get down to the wheel and tire package and we have this massive 22 inch wheel and it is wrapped in the 275 50 Bridgestone tire. Now, this thing is pig, but surprisingly makes you know this suv makes these look kind of small not gonna lie but they're they're nice they have kind of like this polished but painted look to them um really nice design i don't know if you could get the uh cadillac badging in color but i would i would definitely try to opt for that if it does because it'll brighten this up a little bit it's a little on the on the kind of monotone 
<laughs> look to it. Uh, but yeah, the ride is beautiful. These tires are really quiet. They still have a good amount of grip to them. Uh, you also have what looks like small brakes, but they're actually pretty big brakes. They definitely get this guy stopped. So no complaints with that. The pedal feels incredible. The gas pedal was fine as well. Uh, and we have the air suspension. Right now it is at the highest level. Uh, and yeah, it's it, you have three levels, like off-road, I think it's like normal, and then like entrance, exit uh, level. But uh, besides the fact that you don't really have much kind of to work with, the suspension itself has been really, really good. Um, it's been extremely comfortable, no issues with, you know, big bumps or little bumps, nothing. It's really smooth ride, love it. Um, and yeah, it's been quiet. Well, uh, let's go ahead and see what we have on the side. We take a look at the side and this is a big SUV, as you guys can see. Full size SUV, without a doubt. And a couple of things, let's get started in the front. We, well, actually let's get started in this color. Again, this mahogany metallic color is incredible. It looks really good. Again, you guys are probably seeing it brown, but it does have a purplish uh, hue to it, especially when that sun hits it. It looks, yeah, it looks maroon actually. It looks more maroon than, than purple, but yeah, really great color. And again, we have some, some of that little bit of the headlight stick, sticking out from the side. Uh, we have these big 22 inch wheels, which as you guys can see, still looks small. Yeah, we are in the high setting right now, um, but it doesn't go too high and it doesn't go quite much lower um, than, than what we're really at. So yeah, even though it has an off-road setting, I wouldn't want to take this out <laughs> off-roading. But we then have the mirrors here and they do have the camera built in to be part of that surround uh, view that this has. And we have these little uh, kind of like polished, it's like kind of like polished chrome uh, trim to it here. Really good, big doors, massive doors to get in, especially that this is a third row SUV to get into the back row. We have this kind of, again, that poly, like it's not quite chrome. It's, yeah, it's kind of like a, like a, a murky chrome. It's almost like a polished aluminum, so to speak. But yeah, we have the roof rails there. And yeah, overall it's a really big, SUV. Now let's take a look at the key fob. So the wireless entry or the keyless entry, we'll go ahead and put that in my pocket and I go to reach and pull and it doesn't open. Now I pulled in a specific spot. Reason why is these handles don't come out when you typically on a, on a vehicle like this to open it up, there's actually a little button inside. So if I were to go ahead and put my hand in there and squeeze the button, it opens up. It opens up and I can go ahead and we have a deployable step, an illuminated deployable step, which definitely awesome to have. Uh, so it can light up the area there. Now the step is okay. I expected it to kind of drop down a little bit more. Uh, the Wagoneer does drop down significantly more compared to where it is on the body. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's looks great. We close that off and so it'll retract and then I can lock it by pushing here. Now I come to the back and you push that same button and yes, it does open without me having to push the, the front or anything. So thank you Cadillac. And then I can close it and I can't lock it. I can't lock it. So you still have to kind of do that. And you're set. So you were about 90% there, Cadillac. It would have been nice to be able to lock it from the back as well. Uh, speaking about the back, let's go ahead and check out what we have back there. We get to the back and we can see this thing is massive. Yes, it's a big square, but there's a lot of great uh, design cues in this. First thing, we do have these taillights. I love it. The design, the fact that we see a transparent uh, plastic on the outside or cover, and then we have those design elements inside which look really good. The other thing is that outside plastic, it's kind of like a smoked, so a little bit darker than, than full transparent, which gives it a nice touch. Now, I do wanna go ahead and show it off though, because when you unlock, you're gonna see this is your turn signal there, and just that animation, it's just so, so nice. And again, we have the 
big red uh, coming down the entire height of the tail light. So yeah, really nice touch to that. So I'll go ahead and lock it. We have that. And then we have the nice Escalade badge. Here's where you kind of mess up Cadillac. These aren't real exhaust tips, as you guys can probably imagine. Um, they are opened in the back and a, you know, not so pretty <laughs> looking exhaust tube just kind of matches to the opening in the back. Uh, Would have been nice though, but yeah, I guess you can't really see it unless you're really uh, looking under, but it's a nice design. We have again that kind of, um, that brushed, it's kind of like a brushed chrome. Yeah. And then we have the, uh, rear camera, which looks great, um, you know, with the 360 degree uh, view or the surround view. And we have a rear view, rear view mirror camera as well, which is what I really was using the whole time. It, look, it looks really good with this. Um, and let's go ahead and open up the rear. Now we take a look at the key fob and there's different options we have. So I'm going to go ahead and press it twice and that is going to open this up. So yes, you have the option of not necessarily needing to open up the whole tailgate, but you could just do uh, the glass itself, which is good because sometimes you just kind of want to carry and throw something in there without necessarily having to open up the whole thing. So it is a nice little touch. Uh, one of my favorite things with this rear. And then you also have the option of opening up the tailgate uh, with obviously the remote, but <laughs> I was looking for the button here the other day and I was wondering where is it? You know kind of looking all over the place and it was literally right in front of my eyes. So you push down that guy and yeah, it opens up the back and it's pretty big. It's pretty big. It's, it's okay. So my book bag, um, you know, kind of laying it that way, the long way, uh, is going to be able to fit in there. Um, I do have the kid's seat back here but it does obviously fit in there. Um, so there's not a ton of space when you have the seats up, but you can just go ahead and put the seats down and there's gonna be a ton more space. So yeah, this guy can really haul a lot in there. Uh, we did make an Ikea trip. We did shove a massive piece in here. We had to put down the second row. So you are able to put it down and what I like about it is that it's at the same level as the back seat. So it's not any higher. Um, so it is a nice touch. So if you're needing to put something really long, it's not going to kind of stop and have to kind of do a, another, uh, just kind of bump or go up that seat. But yeah, it's a nice area. And again, we can go ahead and, and bring these guys up. And there you go. You can go ahead and just close that off. And with the key fob, again, we have the option of turning on that big V8 under there. So we'll go ahead and press that twice. Yeah, uh, that sounds really good. Let's go ahead and go for a ride. We get inside of the Cadillac Escalade and this is the definition of American Cadillac luxury. Let's break this down because there is a lot to this big guy. So we get started in the door and the door is nice. The armrest is really nice and comfortable. All the controls are within my reach. Um, we do have some buttons for the seats, which we'll discuss. Uh, and the finishes are really nice. The finishes, I, I like them. Uh, we have nice stitching on it. Uh, the color, uh, I, I probably wouldn't go this color, especially if you have kids, uh, because it will get dirty. I don't even know how my pants, my jeans will stain this because I haven't actually looked, but I'd be probably scared to look. Uh, so leather cleaner is definitely going to be needed if you go with this uh, color. Um, but yeah, overall, it's really comfortable. No, no issues there with the, with the door and everything that I need. Mirror is nice. Good good set up there. <laughs> then we get to the seats and the seats are really comfortable. I mean, they look beautiful. They feel great. Uh, adjustability is there. We have both heated and cooled options. So, which reminds me, I'll go ahead and turn on the cool option because uh, it's a little bit on the hotter side today or it will be. Um, but this actually, so one good thing, obviously with it not being black, it definitely does get cooler when you come in, especially in our Texas summer heat. Um, but yeah, overall, this is really comfortable, nice adjustability. Um, 
you know, with no issues of, of finding that sweet spot that's always uh, so hard to find sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, no issues there. Uh, we do have speakers on this thing, which is insane. We'll talk about how many speakers we have in this. But, yeah, overall, nice nice design um you know back seat all three rows are really really good with this then we get to the steering wheel and the steering wheel is nice there's a couple of things that uh, are special about this wheel and uh let's get started on the basic stuff it's got leather it feels nice uh you know it's, it's not too plush but the material those the leather itself is nice and soft the stitching looks really good even though it is kind of like a grayish color and it kind of blends in yeah, if it, I wish it were kind of like that, what, this white color up to it or this ivory, um, but it'd probably get dirty. Uh, but overall, though, it is a nice touch to the steering wheel. And then we have the controls. So the controls with this are kind of different. And I don't know, it, uh, GM related. Uh, so a couple of things I do like is that I no longer have the top button <laughs> like I did with the other ones. So uh yeah we have the wheel so basically we have uh you know cruise control on the left and radio and volume stuff on the right and uh i do like the volume buttons being at the bottom uh so that is a nice little touch there easy to change uh we do have the super cruise uh option which is what this makes it different we do have a little uh kind of led light built in here so when you do turn that on it will give you LED lights turning on in green, blue, and red are, are really the colors that I've seen that I recall. Different, they mean different things, uh, which we'll definitely get into. Um, but yeah, overall, the steering wheel has felt great. Uh, we do have paddle shifters, which apparently don't work uh, in the drive mode. So you do have to be in L, and I believe that is just a limit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it just works as a limit, like, you know, especially like if you're towing, you don't want it to, to shift up or anything or, yeah, I believe. Uh, yeah, but yeah, they're useless in drive. Yeah, it would have been nice to have the volume controls back here and maybe something else up front here. But regardless, it's a nice feeling wheel. We get to the gauge cluster and the gauge cluster is massive. It's a big display, um, but for some reason, the wheel has gotten in the way of everything on this gauge cluster yeah i'm i'm a little confused by that uh I, I don't know if it's my positioning of it uh you know the the steering wheel but it just i cannot see half of the things on here and i am having to kind of duck and dive and kind of to be able to see through the through the opening let me see if maybe i can if i were to oh no it's just yeah i guess so uh yeah, you just kind of have to drive it like a bus. <laughs> you got to have to really put it up as a bus to be able to see everything. But typically, it's not how I like to drive. So it's usually furthest away from me. Uh, and yeah, it's just kind of tough to see everything. Oh, actually, that's not too bad there. Uh, maybe a little too high. But yeah, either way, it, it's a lot, uh, a big screen. But the other thing is, there's not much customizing. Okay, so it turns out I was actually wrong about being able to change that one. Now, I haven't been able to figure out how to change that one. Uh, so yeah, YouTube help me out if there's a way to actually change that one. But let me show you how to really change this one, which is extremely unnecessary. But you're gonna first press this guy here so that the vehicle information loads up. And then you're gonna have an array of different options that you could choose. So right now we have the batter the tire and let's go ahead and no we won't do pads uh we don't really care for brake pads well we do but not for this uh let's do uh let's do coolant temperature so we press that and then you press the show in cluster button and then what that's gonna do is it shows it to you right in there yeah like it's unnecessary so now i have to, if i want to remove it i can remove it sorry and then you won't have anything but it's so unnecessary to have all this that you have to do in order to get that there so i'll go ahead and and do this and show in cluster yeah you know what would be easy if you could use the buttons on your wheel like every other manufacturer that lets you do that well i'm done with my rant back to the video 
on the left side, we do have a smaller uh, screen that lets you change what's on here. So right now we have gauge, we can go to map, so it shows us the actual map, and then AR camera, which is the augmented reality, uses a camera built in there, uh, and granted, this is beautiful. I love this view, which is probably where I was 99% of the time, which we'll, we'll stay, stick to that. Then we have night vision. Night vision does not work uh, unless it is dark, which is a shame because Wagoneer did let you do that. Granted, it's a gimmick useless uh, in the daytime, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to have at least, ha if you paid for it, I don't want to have part-time use of the feature, put it that way. So again, we have the AR camera, uh, which is what we'll kind of stick to with this, but it's it's a beautiful crisp display and that camera feed is really, really good as well. We get over to the infotainment screen, this big screen, and I'm kind of disappointed because in Apple CarPlay, we don't have the widescreen uh, version of it. Yeah, um, I was surprised that we don't have that whole thing being taken up. So that was a little bit of a letdown, but we go to other things like uh, the map, and you're gonna see it does use up the entire screen, which is nice. Yeah, overall though, it's been a nice display, short of, again, the fact that we don't have the option to go ahead and bring up the Apple CarPlay in a bigger screen. Maybe if, you, and I know obviously having this kind of things, Apple CarPlay can't really do uh, that, <laughs> of that shape, a curved shape. So maybe just square that off. I don't see why the angle is really needed. The other thing with this is we have 35 speakers in this. It's insane. Now you're probably thinking, wow, that's gotta sound good. Not 100%. So they have this surround thing, AKG Studio Reference. Uh, AKG, uh, being an audio engineer, really big on microphones, tons of, you know, if you've heard music, you've heard their microphones. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we have this kind of surround 3D thing, and you can see kind of the animation. I hated it. It sounded horrible. It sounded like we see that we have kind of a dome surrounding us, but it just created nothing but holes in the music. Like it just sounded really thin. Uh, so it's been at stereo the entire time after I came across that. So yeah, more speakers don't necessarily mean better sound or at least it does. So it is really good as long as you're not using that surround function. Just use stereo and you will get a blast of music, literally, especially when you have them here on your headrest. Then we come down here to the AC controls and they're nice. I like the AC controls. I like the little display there. The only thing that was really, really bad was at night. At night, you can't see these buttons. These buttons themselves aren't illuminated and this isn't a touch screen. So you're really having to kind of hunt uh, for, okay, I wanna bring down the uh, volume, the volume, the uh, fan speed, and you have to kind of make sure that you're within that area. Now this one isn't bad because it's a bigger one, but if you're wanting to kind of sync it or do any of the other things with the smaller buttons uh, to the left and the right of those, it was a little difficult to kind of feel out, okay, is this the one kind of, you know, doing that thing. So yeah, I was, I, I would have been nice to have these illuminated. We come back here to the shifter. Shifter is nice and, and simple, no, no complaints there, not a big deal. Auto hold, which is great with this, uh, the auto start stop and the lane departure. Great things, no complaints there. They work as they should. We come back a little bit more to kind of like what I call the command center, so to speak. And we have our volume control. We have our uh, little rotary knob to, to you know change things or change your selection and then push down to accept it. Uh, we have our quick button. So we have for music, we have phone call, we have uh, maps and you know car info, home and back button. This has been great. This has been very simple. Um, the volume knob has been what has attracted me the most, uh, you know, as far as changing the volume, as opposed to the steering wheel. Uh, I keep forgetting that I have it here and it's just been more welcoming to do it through the, um, 
it's you know through the knob itself and yeah no complaints there we come back a little bit more and this has wireless charging so this has a wireless charger i love this because it's a little little cubby <laughs> it's a little cubby and your phone goes vertical it saves so much more space than if we had something laying flat so i love that and it's got like little little rubber uh things inside to kind of push it towards the uh you know towards the charger itself the charging surface and it keeps it nice and tight in there no moving around uh, even though there is some significant amount of space you know to the left and right of my phone it doesn't it won't move either way so nice touch there kind of like really really love this uh, wireless charger and with us having wireless charging this also does have wireless apple carplay that's actually how i have my phone hooked up to this right now so yeah it's a nice touch but if you don't have wireless apple carplay or you don't want to use it uh, you still have USB-C and USB-A, which you can see from my cable that I have here. And then we have another little cubby, which is nice if you want to put maybe the key or something else. And then we have the cup holders, no complaints there. We get back to the armrest and the armrest is nice and big. It's been super comfortable, enough space for me and enough space for my wife that we're not playing the uh, chicken, el the elbow chicken game <laughs> with each other. So that's a good touch there. Uh, we open it up and we have more usb uh, connections in there and yeah i mean it's it's been it's been fine uh you know we have a good amount of space there you could probably do uh not a doesn't look like you can do a whole nah you won't be able to do a whole jug a gallon jug of, of milk but you can do a maybe a half gallon i would say uh, on there but yeah super comfortable no complaints there we get to the middle row and we have captain's chairs yes my favorite as you can tell uh yeah i'm being sarcastic i don't like captain's chairs because it removes that middle seat and that means if you need to have a fifth person you're needing to use the third row and then that takes away from cargo space in the back yes i know i'm ranting i'm rambling but <laughs> either way though those seats are really comfortable really nice it's basically the same thing as we have up here um, my kiddo had no complaints about it you know loved it everything is good comfortable really able to position it the way that you want as well then we get to the third row and we do have the third row up it is very comfortable there's a lot of space back there leg room not an issue so even with the front row uh, or the middle row not really all the way up so you do still have some leg room in the third row which is good it's a usable third row yes this is that's what third rows should be usable then uh, we get to the trunk area and the trunk area is good it's okay when you have the seats up it's good when you have a down but again we have that middle area where things can come forward towards you now we did go to ikea for a big trip <laughs> so we got uh you know we got cabinets uh that we have built in basically that go from the floor to virtually our ceiling in our house so extreme long length eight foot is what i think the guy me measured when we were like oh gosh we don't know if this is gonna fit and it did fit diagonally very very snug i was all the way up forward uh yeah but uh it fit <laughs> as you can see from the picture but yeah it was pretty big when you put everything down um, I do like that the middle seat does go flat and level with the um, back third row so definitely good if you're needing to just have kind of like a big box uh, there now let's talk performance we're dealing with the 6.2 liter V8 cranking out 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque that is connected to the 10-speed auto and then to the uh, 4x4 system from Cadillac now uh let me tell you this this thing has been incredible the startups v8 roaring true american <laughs> it really really can go yeah uh it does sound great it does sound american it does sound v8 it does sound american v8 this thing is incredible gas though yeah um these are the mpgs you get it's not bad for what it is and the reason why is because this guy can 
technically be from as low as a two cylinder engine all the way up to the eight cylinder uh, that, you know, using all eight cylinders it has. So it does have the ability to cut the other cylinders in order to be efficient, you know, for things like maybe highway cruising that you're not um, needing, you know, at a constant speed. Th you know, moments when it's not really needed to have all of them fired up. So yeah, it's been nice. And the ride has been incredible. So this does have the air suspension. It does have three modes. Um, it is low, middle, and high, so to speak. And obviously you can't, you can only be in the normal mode, but it's been a really comfortable ride. I am super relaxed in this. The Super Cruise has been incredible. It's been so good when it's available. <laughs> so that is the big thing. So in my area, as you guys can see, it's probably not in their system, which kind of like, yeah, uh, let me borrow this guy. I can map this whole area for you, this North Dallas area for you. Uh, but it's been really good when I've been able to activate it. On the highway, the biggest thing with the Super Cruise was we were on a curve or about to approach a curve and I turned on my turn signal and it will change lanes for you. Before a curve, you know, during a curve and after a curve. So it was really, really good. And at no moment that I feel like, oh my gosh, you know, it's kind of gonna go too much into, into the next lane. It, it did not, it was so, so good. It was surprisingly good. And I was just amazed at how amazing, the, yeah, at how great the Super Cruise was. Downside, you gotta pay for it. You gotta pay for it. Yeah, I know, nothing is free, but nothing continues to be free. And what that means is you gotta pay for a subscription for the Super Cruise. I'm assuming maintenance, you know, Cadillac has to recuperate having to add more or GM has to recuperate adding more uh, roads you know, maintaining that system, all that. So yeah, that's kind of the only kind of downside to it. Uh, I didn't get to see how much it was, but it does give you like some time when you when you add the Super Cruise. It's just been really, really good. And even when you don't have the Super Cruise available, just using the adaptive cruise uh, option has been really good. This has been incredible ride. Overall though, this has been a really nice ride. Now the price, we're talking over $100,000 how this one is equipped. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough because this segment is getting extremely competitive, even with its own. What I mean by that is the Yukon Denali XL. I don't believe we hit 100,000 with that one as far as like, you know, price, but I felt like that was incredible. It had all this luxury. It had the bigger size because obviously we can get the Cadillac at the really massive size, but now we're having to pay that additional uh, for it. But yeah, this is, this has me kind of uh, between Yukon and then we have the Grand Wagoneer. The Grand Wagoneer has probably been the biggest competitor to this because we do have tons of luxuries. We have massage seats, which this one doesn't. Um, we do have the displays in the back, which this one doesn't. Um, it's just, uh, it's tough, but this has been beautiful. <laughs> that color outside is just, you know, catching everyone's attention. But yeah, it's, I don't know, it's tough, but there's something about it that makes me want to have this over the better equipped Grand Wagoneer? I don't know. It's, it's kind of one of those irrational decisions. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Cadillac Escalade. And remember, find the right gear. See ya.